If you are an American who is working overseas as a digital nomad, you probably want to know what is the best way that you can set your business up legally so that you can pay the least amount of taxes possible. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you several legal considerations that you need to be thinking about so you can do just that. You ready? Let's do this. Hi, my name is Jim Hart. I am an online business lawyer and an entrepreneur. I also enjoy traveling. In this past week, I've been working remotely from the beautiful city of Lisbon, Portugal. And while I personally don't have any immediate plans to move myself and my family to Portugal, I know that a lot of you out there are thinking about moving overseas to someplace like a Portugal or someplace else in Europe or Costa Rica or, or anywhere really in the world that is not the United States. And that's because since March of last year when the pandemic started, it has literally changed the game for everyone, not just solopreneurs and digital nomads and online entrepreneurs but also for remote knowledge workers who can actually pick up and go and leave and move someplace else and work remotely just as if they were at home in the United States. And that's why today I want to share with you how you can set up your business legally so that you are paying the least amount of U.S. taxes possible while still living an amazing life abroad traveling and seeing the world. And before I go any further, I do want to give a quick disclaimer and tell you that this is actually very complicated stuff. I'm a lawyer and I still find myself struggling to figure this stuff out. And that's because not only are you dealing with federal government issues, you're dealing with state law tax issues, you're dealing with uh, tax issues in the country where you decide to pick up residence. There's there's all sorts of considerations here that you need to be aware of. So if you have questions about what tax strategy is going to be best for you, then I do recommend that you seek out the help of an international CPA who has knowledge about the tax treaties and everything else that's going to go into planning the best strategy for you. And the reason why that is so important is because the United States is one of the only, maybe the only country in the world that taxes its citizens, not based on the fact that they live in the United States, but based on the fact that they are a U.S. citizen. So it does not matter where or how or what type of income you earn around the world, the U.S. government is going to make you file a tax return regardless as long as you are a U.S. citizen. So if you're a U.S. citizen and you live in Portugal where I'm staying this week, then you're still going to have to file and pay U.S. taxes just like any other citizen that would live in a Florida or Ohio or North Carolina or someplace else like that. And while there are certain tax perks that come with living abroad, such as the foreign earned income tax exclusion, that's a mouthful, which allows you to deduct up to $217,400 per year if you are a married couple filing jointly. There are still strict rules that you must follow and deadlines that you must meet to make sure that you can qualify for those exclusions. So if you muck it up, it's gone. You can kiss your deduction goodbye. So today I want to touch on three different topics. And the first is how to make sure that you can qualify for that foreign earned income tax exclusion that is so great for U.S. citizens who are living abroad. But then I also want to touch on how you can get yourself out of paying state income taxes if you're currently paying state income taxes in the states. When you move abroad, you'd still have to pay those state income taxes, but there is a way to get out of that as well. And then finally, I want to talk to you about what it means and, and how you can make sure that you're not paying taxes in the country where you're actually going to be living. So let's take those one at a time. Now, to qualify for the foreign earned income tax exclusion, you must live outside the United States for at least 330 calendar days during the year, during a 12 month period. Again, if you've got questions about whether or not you're gonna qualify for this, I would definitely make sure you seek out the help of a tax professional. And also I will say there are certain exemptions on the foreign earned income tax exclusion Self-employment taxes, for example, are, do not fall into the exclusion for the foreign earned income tax exclusion. So if you have an LLC set up and you have not filed that S corporation status and you're paying self-employment taxes on your entire income, that's 15.3% then that does not qualify for an exclusion from, from the foreign earned income tax exclusion. That is a mouthful. I think this is, you need to figure out a better way to say that. So that's the first and probably the easiest thing to figure out if you decide to live abroad is that you can figure out a way to actually not have to pay any federal income taxes on the money that you earn while you're living abroad. 
if you can meet that standard. The second thing I want you to think about is how to make sure you're not paying any state income taxes. Now, if you live in one of the 43 states that tax your income, then you're probably going to want to think about leaving that state and going and establishing a domicile in another state where there is no income tax. And there are actually seven states who do not tax income for their residents. And those states are Alaska, Florida, Nevada, South Dakota, Texas, Washington State, and Wyoming. If you live somewhere else, regardless of whether or not you're a resident of the state or not during the tax year, you may still have to file state income taxes. So for example, I live in North Carolina, and I know that North Carolina will continue to tax my income even if I were to move abroad. And so the way you get around that is you have to basically disengage yourself from the tax system in that state and you have to establish a new domicile in a state where there is no income tax. Now, the easiest way to do this for me personally, if I were to do this, would be to disengage from the North Carolina tax system and reestablish a domicile in Florida where I'm also licensed to practice law. That would just make the most sense. It's also the closest state to me where there is no income tax. And basically, here's how you do that. You're going to need to sell all your assets that you might have in the state. So you're gonna to need to sell your house. You may need to sell or re-register your car in the new state. You'll need to get a new driver's license. You'll need to register to vote as, in all likelihood, an absentee voter. You will need to obtain a mailing address in the new state. Now there's lots of services that can do this for you and they'll actually scan and or forward mail that you get to your residence abroad. The easiest way to do it is if they can just scan it for you and send you an email with a scanned copy of your mail. That's gonna be the best way to do it. And then if you already have an LLC set up in the state where you're currently living and working, you're gonna to wanna to move that LLC to the new state. Now, the way you do that is typically you're going to administratively dissolve the LLC in the current state that you're in, and you're gonna to have to form a new LLC in the state with no income tax. Now understand that this is different than the rules that I typically tell people about only file an LLC in a state where you live and work. When you're moving abroad, the rules are gonna change a little bit because you still have to have that LLC to do business in the United States, but you can pick the state that's gonna be the most favorable to you from a tax perspective. And I recommend that you do all of these things before you actually leave the United States because for some of them, you may actually need to go to the state where you're going to uh, set up your new domicile and do these things in person. Now, I will also mention that there are four states that are what are considered sticky states. And that means they don't want to let their residents leave really easily. So if you're a resident of California, South Carolina, New Mexico, or Virginia, then they are gonna be a little bit more tricky and it's gonna be harder to disengage from the tax systems in those states, and you're gonna to need to pay a little bit more attention to what you're doing to make sure that you can properly disengage. So the last consideration is gonna be taxes in this, the country where you decide to set up shop and live. Now, one of the reasons why I love Portugal as a destination, other than the fact that they have a digital nomad visa, which allows somebody to come and work here remotely based on their income, from the United States is because if you are classified as a non-habitual resident and there's certain deadlines that you need to file if you were to move to Portugal to deal with that, then you are actually exempted from paying income tax on your foreign sourced income for 10 years. I mean, for 10 years, any income you bring into the country, you're not taxed on. So in this way, now you're not being taxed in the country where you set up residency you're not being taxed by the federal government, at least to the extent that your income is lower than the either $217,400 threshold if you're a married couple or half of that if you are an individual, and you're not being taxed by the state where you are domiciled in the United States. So for 10 years at least, you can get basically you can live off your earnings basically tax-free up to a certain level and threshold and that's kind of cool and could actually save you quite a bit of money on an annual basis. So things to think about if you're thinking about setting up residency as a digital nomad in a foreign country. If you like this video, make sure you leave a comment below and let me know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe. And here's another video I've done that talks about how I earned passive income that if I chose to would allow me to live and move abroad to a country like Portugal.
Thanks so much. Have a great day, folks. We'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.